Welcome, back to my channel of mystery and mayhem, without you taking you time to watch my videos, would not have an audience. Okay everyone let me tell you another story of intrigue for you. Achilles' most notable feat during the Trojan War was the slaying of the Trojan prince Hector outside the gates of Troy. Although the death of Achilles is not presented in the Iliad, other sources concur that he was killed near the end of the Trojan War by Paris, who shot him with an arrow. Later legends, beginning with Statius' unfinished epic Achilliad, written in the 1st century AD, state that Achilles was invulnerable in all of his body except for one heel, because when his mother Thetis dipped him in the river Styx as an infant, she held him by one of his heels. Alluding to these legends, the term, Achilles' heel, has come to mean a point of weakness, especially in someone or something with an otherwise strong constitution. The Achilles tendon is also named after him due to these legends. Achilles was the son of Thetis, a Nereid and daughter of the old man of the sea, and Peleus, the king of the Myrmidons. Zeus and Poseidon had been rivals for Thetis's hand in marriage until Prometheus, the forethinker, warned Zeus of a prophecy, originally uttered by Themis, goddess of divine law, that Thetis would bear a son greater than his father. For this reason, the two gods withdrew their pursuit and had her wed Peleus. There is a tale that offers an alternative version of these events. In the Argonautica Zeus' sister and wife, Hera alludes to Thetis' chaste resistance to the advances of Zeus, pointing out that Thetis was so loyal to Hera's marriage bond that she coolly rejected the father of gods. Thetis, although a daughter of the sea god Nereus, was also brought up by Hera, further explaining her resistance to the advances of Zeus. Zeus was furious and decreed that she would never marry an immortal. According to the Achilleid, written by Statius in the 1st century AD, and to non-surviving previous sources, when Achilles was born Thetis tried to make him immortal by dipping him in the river Styx, however, he was left vulnerable at the part of the body by which she held him, his left heel, see Achilles' heel, Achilles' tendon. It is not clear if this version of events was known earlier. In another version of this story, Thetis anointed the boy in ambrosia and put him on top of a fire to burn away the mortal parts of his body. She was interrupted by Peleus and abandoned both father and son in a rage. None of the sources before Statius make any reference to this general invulnerability. On the contrary, in the Iliad, Homer mentions Achilles being wounded. In Book 21 the Paeonian hero Asteropaeus, son of Pelagon, challenged Achilles with the river Scamander. He was ambidextrous, and cast a spear from each hand, one grazed Achilles' elbow, drawing a spurt of blood, the, in the few fragmentary poems of the epic cycle which describe the hero's death, i.e. the Cypria, the little Iliad by Leshes of Pyrrha, the Aethiopus and Ilia Persis by Arctinus of Miletus, there is no trace of any reference to his general invulnerability or his famous weakness at the heel. In the later vase paintings presenting the death of Achilles, the arrow, or in many cases, arrows, hit his torso. Achilles' most notable feat during the Trojan War was the slaying of the Trojan prince Hector outside the gates of Troy. Although the death of Achilles is not presented in the Iliad, other sources concur that he was killed near the end of the Trojan War by Paris, who shot him with an arrow. Later legends, beginning with Statius' unfinished epic Achilliad, written in the 1st century AD, state that Achilles was invulnerable in all of his body except for one heel because when his mother Thetis dipped him in the river Styx as an infant, she held him. According to the Iliad, Achilles arrived at Troy with fifty ships, each carrying fifty Myrmidons. He appointed five leaders, each leader commanding five hundred Myrmidons Menestheus, Uterus, Pasander, Phoenix, and Alcimedon, Telephus. When the Greeks left for the Trojan War, they accidentally stopped in Mysia, ruled by King Telephus. In the resulting battle, Achilles gave Telephus a wound that would not heal. Telephus consulted an oracle, who stated that, He that wounded shall heal. Guided by the oracle, he arrived at Argos, where Achilles healed him so that he might become their guide for the voyage to Troy. According to other reports in Euripides' lost play about Telephus, 
he went to Aulus pretending to be a beggar and asked Achilles to heal his wound. Achilles refused, claiming to have no medical knowledge. Alternatively, Telephus held Orestes for ransom, the ransom being Achilles' aid in healing the wound. Odysseus reasoned that the spear had inflicted the wound, therefore, the spear must be able to heal it. Pieces of the spear were scraped off onto the wound and Telephus was healed, Troilus, according to the Cypria, the part of the epic cycle that tells the events of the Trojan War before Achilles' wrath, when the Achaeans desired to return home, they were restrained by Achilles, who afterward attacked the cattle of Aeneas, sacked neighboring cities, like Pedasus and Lernessus, where the Greeks captured the queen Briseis, and killed tents. A son of Apollo, as well as Priam's son Troilus in the sanctuary of Apollo Thimbraos, however, the romance between Troilus and Chryseis described in Geoffrey Chaucer's Troilus and Chryside and in William Shakespeare's Troilus and Cressida is a medieval invention. In Dare's Phrygia's account of the destruction of Troy, the Latin summary through which the story of Achilles was transmitted to medieval Europe, as well as in older accounts, Troilus was a young Trojan prince, the youngest of King Priam's and Hecuba's five legitimate sons. Or according to other sources, another son of Apollo. Despite his youth, he was one of the main Trojan war leaders, a horse fighter or chariot fighter, according to Homer. Prophecies linked Troilus' fate to that of Troy and so he was ambushed in an attempt to capture him. Yet Achilles, struck by the beauty of both Troilus and his sister Polyxena and overcome with lust, directed his sexual attentions on the youth, who, refusing to yield, instead found himself decapitated upon an altar omphalos of Apollo Thimbraos. Later versions of the story suggested Troilus was accidentally killed by Achilles in an overardent lover's embrace. In this version of the myth, Achilles' death, therefore, came in retribution for this sacrilege. Ancient writers treated Troilus as the epitome of a dead child mourned by his parents. Had Troilus lived to adulthood, the first Vatican mythographer claimed, Troy would have been invincible, however, the motif is older and found already in Plautus' Bacchides. In the Iliad, Homer's Iliad is the most famous narrative of Achilles' deeds in the Trojan War. Achilles' wrath, Minu iota chi iota lambda lambda omega, menes Achilleos, is the central theme of the poem. The first two lines of the Iliad read, the Homeric epic only covers a few weeks of the decade-long war and does not narrate Achilles' death. It begins with Achilles' withdrawal from battle after being dishonored by Agamemnon, the commander of the Achaean forces. Agamemnon has taken a woman named Chryses as his slave. Her father Chryses, a priest of Apollo, begs Agamemnon to return her to him. Agamemnon refuses, and Apollo sends a plague to the Greeks. The prophet Calchas correctly determines the source of the troubles but will not speak unless Achilles vows to protect him. Achilles does so, and Calchas declares that Chryses must be returned to her father. Agamemnon consents but then commands that Achilles battle prize Briseis the daughter of Briseis, be brought to him to replace Chryses. Angry At the dishonor of having his plunder and glory taken away, and, as he says later because he loves Briseis, with the urging of his mother Thetis, Achilles refuses to fight or lead his troops alongside the other Greek forces. At the same time, burning with rage over Agamemnon's theft, Achilles prays to Thetis to convince Zeus to help the Trojans gain ground in the war, so that he may regain his honor, as the battle turns against the Greeks, thanks to the influence of Zeus, Nestor declares that the Trojans are winning because Agamemnon has angered Achilles, and urges the king to appease the warrior. Agamemnon agrees and sends Odysseus and two other chieftains, Ajax and Phoenix. They promise that. If Achilles returns to battle, Agamemnon will return the captive Briseis and other gifts. Achilles rejects all Agamemnon offers him and simply urges the Greeks to sail home as he was planning to do. The Trojans, led by Hector, subsequently push the Greek army back toward the beaches and assault the Greek ships. With the Greek forces on the verge of absolute destruction, 
Patroclus leads the Myrmidons into battle, wearing Achilles' armor, though Achilles remains at his camp. Patroclus succeeds in pushing the Trojans back from the beaches but is killed by Hector before he can lead a proper assault on the city of Troy. After receiving the news of the death of Patroclus from Antilochus, the son of Nestor, Achilles grieves over his beloved companion's death. His mother Thetis comes to comfort the distraught Achilles. She persuades Hephaestus to make new armor for him, in place of the armor that Patroclus had been wearing, which was taken by Hector. The new armor includes the shield of Achilles, described in great detail in the poem. Enraged over the death of Patroclus, Achilles ends his refusal to fight and takes the field, killing many men in his rage but always seeking out Hector. Achilles even engages in battle with the river god's commander, who has become angry that Achilles is choking his waters with all the men he has killed. The god tries to drown Achilles but is stopped by Hera and Hephaestus. Zeus himself takes note of Achilles' rage and sends the gods to restrain him so that he will not go on to sack Troy itself before the time allotted for its destruction, seeming to show that the unhindered rage of Achilles can defy fate itself. Finally, Achilles finds his prey. Achilles chases Hector around the wall of Troy three times before Athena, in the form of Hector's favorite and dearest brother, Deiphobus, persuades Hector to stop running and fight Achilles face to face. After Hector realizes the trick, he knows the battle is inevitable. Wanting to go down fighting, he charges at Achilles with his only weapon. His sword, but misses. Accepting his fate, Hector begs Achilles not to spare his life, but to treat his body with respect after killing him. Achilles tells Hector it is hopeless to expect that of him, declaring that, my rage, my fury would drive me now to hack your flesh away and eat you raw, such agonies you have caused me. Achilles then kills Hector and drags his corpse by its heels behind his chariot. After having a dream where Patroclus begs Achilles to hold his funeral, Achilles hosts a series of funeral games in honor of his companion. At the onset of his duel with Hector, Achilles is referred to as the brightest star in the sky, which comes on in the autumn, Orion's dog, Sirius, a sign of evil. During the cremation of Patroclus, he is compared to Hesperus, the evening-slash-western star, Venus, while the burning of the funeral pyre lasts until Phosphorus, the morning-slash-eastern star, also Venus, has set, descended, to, with the assistance of the god Hermes, Argifondes. Hector's father Priam goes to Achilles' tent to plead with Achilles for the return of Hector's body so that he can be buried. Achilles relents and promises a truce for the duration of the funeral, lasting nine days with a burial on the tenth, in the tradition of Niobe's offspring. The poem ends with a description of Hector's funeral, with the doom of Troy and Achilles himself still to come. The Ethiopus, 7th century BC, and a work named Post America, composed by Quintus of Smyrna in the 4th century CE, relate further events from the Trojan War. When Penthesilea, queen of the Amazons and daughter of Ares, arrives in Troy, Priam hopes that she will defeat Achilles. After his temporary truce with Priam, Achilles fights and kills the warrior queen, only to grieve over her death later. At first, he was so distracted by her beauty, he did not fight as intensely as usual. Once he realized that his distraction was endangering his life, he refocused and killed her. Following the death of Patroclus, Nestor's son Antilochus becomes Achilles' closest companion. When Memnon, son of the dawn goddess Eos and king of Ethiopia, slays Antilochus, Achilles once more obtains revenge on the battlefield, killing Memnon. Consequently, Eos will not let the sun rise until Zeus persuades her. The fight between Achilles and Memnon over Antilochus echoes that of Achilles and Hector over Patroclus, except that Memnon, unlike Hector, was also the son of a goddess. The death of Achilles, even if considered solely as it occurred in the oldest sources, is a complex one, with many different versions. Starting with the oldest account, in the Iliad book XXII, 
Hector predicts with his last dying breath that Paris and Apollo will slay him at the Skian gates leading to Troy, with an arrow to the heel according to Statius. In Book XXII, the sad spirit of the dead Patroclus visits Achilles just as he drifts off into slumber, requesting that his bones be placed with those of Achilles in his golden vase, a gift of his mother. In the Odyssey Book 11, Odysseus sails to the underworld and converses with the shades. One of these is Achilles, who when greeted as, blessed in life. Blessed in death, responds that he would rather be a slave to the worst of masters than be king of all the dead. But Achilles then asks Odysseus about his son's exploits in the Trojan War, and when Odysseus tells of Neoptolemus' heroic actions, Achilles is filled with satisfaction. In the Odyssey book Ziv, we read dead King Agamemnon's ghostly account of his death. Achilles' funeral pyre bleached bones had been mixed with those of Patroclus and put into his mother's golden vase. Also, the bones of Antilochus, who had become closer to Achilles than any other following Patroclus' death, were separately enclosed. And, the customary funeral games of a hero were performed, and a massive tomb or mound was built on the Hellespont for approaching sea-goers to celebrate. Achilles was represented in the Ethiopus as living after his death on the island of Luk at the mouth of the river Danube. Another version of Achilles' death is that he fell deeply in love with one of the Trojan princesses, Polyxena. Achilles asks Priam for Polyxena's hand in marriage. Priam is willing because it would mean the end of the war and an alliance with the world's greatest warrior. But while Priam is overseeing the private marriage of Polyxena and Achilles, Paris, who would have to give up Helen if Achilles married his sister, hides in the bushes and shoots Achilles with a divine arrow, killing him. According to some accounts, he had married Medea in life, so that after both their deaths they were to be united in the Elysian fields of Hades, as Hera promised Thetis in Apollonius Argonautica, 3rd century BC, Achilles' armor was the object of a feud between Odysseus and Telamonian Ajax, Ajax the Greater. They competed for it by giving speeches on why they were the bravest after Achilles' death, to their Trojan prisoners, who, after considering both men's presentations, decided Odysseus was more deserving of the armor. Furious, Ajax cursed Odysseus, which earned him the ire of Athena who temporarily made Ajax so mad with grief and anguish that he began killing sheep, thinking them his comrades. After a while, when Athena lifted his madness and Ajax realized that he had been killing sheep, he was so ashamed that he committed suicide. Odysseus eventually gave the armor to Neoptolemus, the son of Achilles. When Odysseus encounters the shade of Ajax much later in the house of Hades, Odyssey, Ajax was still so angry about the outcome of the competition that he refuses to speak to Odysseus. This is why I love mythology, yes we show our human traits such as jealousy and rage but the gods and goddess do as well in many of the stories in mythology. I truly hope you enjoyed this story, till the next time we meet, be safe out there. Blessed it be.